said, you fucked me over back in the day. I'm going to get you back. Fuck yeah. Right? Well, well destroy your lives. Above, right, right at this pool. We know, we know that we know for a fact that a window was left over open by a renovator to air out a room that was freshly painted. So it could make sense that if you, if you're working on the team, you're just like, you're just looking for an opportunity and, and you know, you kind of, you, you, you see someone, you're like, yeah, I've got, yeah, leave that window open. Perfect. Right. Um, and you just come and lay in wait, but it's, it does seem the, the part problem with, I have with the renovators when I look at it is the timing, because I always feel that whoever, did this had to have known or been tipped off by someone that they're coming coming home home. spaced apart because you got to act fast because if Barry comes home at the same time, you're fucked. Like you're fucked. You can't do that. Why they're old? Yeah, but, yeah I don't think. Why so. could you not take two people, two old I mean, people? One dials nine one one. Maybe. Right? What if we had a gu- What if you had a gun? Well, I think. I think the method of murder would have changed. It yeah. would have went from fucking lig- ligature strangulation to fucking to fucking double taps. Yeah. Yeah, right? but at the same at the same time, when I hear that, I go, okay, well, that's probable, right? It's, that's probably what happened. But what if if they if they came home at the same time and you were on and you had a gun. That's what I mean. And you caught and you caught them before any phones, any the anything. The method of murder just changes. But why not just if you already caught them and you have them at gunpoint? Why not just make them do whatever you want at that point? But see, here, the thing is, the thing is for me is this: I feel like you'd put up a struggle. I feel you know you're going to die either way. You put up a fight. I feel like whoever did this knew their time and knew their patterns because of the fact that they were waiting upstairs first for honey. Right, and then when they well, that's they a, that's honey. assumption though. We we don't that's know assumption. That. That's an assumption. We don't know. That. Yes, they, that that is it's true. But that's the you know when you look at the series of events, Honey was home first, right? Yeah, we know and that. But that's it, all we know. She made it into the bathroom across the hall with her phone. We know that, and no, we know that we phone, don't know that. Okay, made the how phone do we know in, that the fucking killer? We know the, put we the know phone. The fo- we don't know. Yeah, the we know the phone was in the bathroom. Fair enough. Fair enough. But then you know the killer then waits at the bottom of the stairs for Barry because he drops his stuff in surprise. So we know he's waiting. Right, so he knows he was taking that. And interest. like the he other thing startled. too is, the thing that came to my mind too is, maybe he came up from behind him and started strangling him, and that's why he dropped the papers. Maybe, that's right? Possible. Like in my head, I feel like these were both sneak. Like sneak in my head, attacks. I see it, they both were snuck up, snuck up on, lynched over. It just the odd thing is is the lack of a fight at all. I guess you can you that's can what, put someone out. That's real what I mean. Quick. That's why yeah. I think it's a and that's why I think it was a sneak. Like yeah. that's why I feel like you would fight otherwise, right? So on the on the thing of the renovators like one of the things that you know you can find in some interviews and some talk is that honey sherman was not friendly to these people renovating her house like some of like i can go by personal experience when you work in a rich person's house they are generally you work for them and they let you yeah. know yeah but they don't, that's just how it they is don't go around calling you cracker though do they because yeah Honey, I've heard some unsavory well, things yeah, about honey, honey in her. Honey was maybe you know a, a, a cracker, or was it more like a little anti-Semitic? Well, well she no, she was she, well she wasn't anti-Semitic because she was Jewish. Yeah, but she was dropping some very slurs. hard on uh, Middle Eastern people and Arabs, and apparently didn't like them to, working in her house. Let's put it that which, way. And like, hey, listen, there is a lot of Arab and and. Uh, Jewish friction, like that's a normal thing going back a very long, long time, right? Thousands so of years, thousands right? of like years. That's, so that's pretty normal. But apparently, she really liked to shit on everybody. Yeah. Well, and especially uh, color. Yeah. people of and color, Muslims. <laughs> yeah, Muslims and Arabs. Yeah, and she, she. So, this, so her attitude may have triggered what you're saying here. It may have. May have pushed someone over the edge to be like. Well, Fuck I'm going to make girl. a loose link. I'm going to make family. a loose link that I kind of made between the renovators and possible extremist terrorist groups. And the reason is, oh, yeah, a little jump, stretch, little jump, it. but bear with me here, right? <laughs> One of the things that Barry and Honey Sherman were involved in, and Andrew, you might remember the name. It's now for. It's now past my mind, but they're involved in a group that basically would try to buy and sell assets to bankrupt extremist groups so they couldn't so they couldn't fund terrorist activities united jewish appeal yes so they would they would work you know in basically like a counter terrorist group right but 
by bankrupting their corporations and their companies and what they were trying to invest their money in. They were actively trying to bankrupt them ahead of time, right? So this group would, was obviously fucking pissing off extremist groups right so you have you have this and obviously you know it, it it was known that they were part of this group so maybe their names are getting floated around of like of of possible people that they want killed these extremist groups right now you have renovations you have someone in there who just goes hey i'm working in their house so you have maybe an affiliate someone who works there who knows someone who knows someone who's in involved with an extremist group and they're like i'm working in their house right now and they go can you leave a way for us to get in right and so basically they're sending a message to the united jewish appeal do it that that's what it is right yeah basically united like jewish appeal. but there was no real message there was nothing to say that they left the message that's i know but there was sense. no like but maybe it has something to do with an... that statue maybe those statues there's meaning in that in their positioning of how they were positioned that we don't understand but someone does I love the reach but i have no idea well and, and it's not only that too because they actually got in some hot water with the jdl the jewish defense league is that like um, the justice league pretty much <laughs> it's like mossad and <laughs> but it's just all lawyers but, um they got a little bit of hot water with them because they were staunch supporters of the canadian liberal party and the uh, the jdl are like hardcore right wing and mm. they weren't okay with them backing the the liberal party and the trudeau government yeah and, and it, like so there was a lot of conflict there like they actually like did some protesting at his booster campaigns and everything like that and, like and barry also blocked a big investigation into into like his he blocked a big investigation into like his dealings with like the Trudeau fundraising. He like put up a lot of money to block any kind of investigation. So yep. it, it, it's, that is a kind of interesting that may, maybe this has something to do with that. Right. Well, and the like JDL is, is on the FBI's terrorist list. Mm. Right. So right? Maybe, like that's right. We've seen but. it's, it's, it, I don't think it's crazy to think it, it's not out of the realm of possibilities, but why don't we ground it more? What's, Andrew, you said there was the, the I, potentially another family. I, well, I'll talk about something that kind of this. This is where my like when I put up my fucking uh, Pepe Silva board on the wall yeah. and I was connecting fucking <laughs> you know the red fucking what do you call it? All your all your lines and yeah, dots, the lines and, and the dots all and shit. all that shit. I, something that really stuck out to me in an interview, Jonathan Sherman, the only son of Barry and Honey. Um, he described his father as being brilliant, but lacking in emotional and social intelligence. Okay. So, Sounds about right to me. Right. From so what I've heard. This is, this is a man that, you know, he's lacking the compassion. He, like Braden said, he put his business before everything else. He didn't go on family vacations. He was busy at work. He acted like opted out because he wanted to focus on work. Okay. From all accounts, it was a hard cold upbringing for these kids even though they grew up you know with silver spoons up their ass yeah either way in the summer of 2017 so we're talking right before the murders months barry had lost a drug patent case right Apotex was likely going to have to pay upwards of 580 million dollars to a rival company in january of 2018 Supposedly, Barry had very little cash liquidity and was scrambling for ways to pay. Sources say Barry wanted Jonathan, his son, and his business partner to help by mortgaging, by putting up for mortgages or putting mortgages on their chain of nine self storage properties, all purchased with instant interest free loans from Barry. Okay. Right before his death, he recalled a $60 million loan that he had loaned Jonathan. Right? Yeah. So let, let's bring in the family members, right? This is Canada's most litigious man who is at the time of his de death had 1,200 cases open. A lot of them, he was not winning. And then you have fucking kids who are sitting here looking at their inheritance being fucking dwindled away. He's asking for money back. Okay? He's been doing ridiculously terrible business deals with shady people. 
losing half his stake in Apotex due to bad investments in fucking dick pills, nutrition, <laughs> nutritional supplements, <laughs> fundraising, uh, funding no, movies, C list. Movies. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.